Good day. In this video, we're going to look at the parabola, the typical grade 11 and 12, level 3 question. They ask us here, for each of the functions below, state whether the sign of A, P, and Q is positive, negative, or zero. We're working with a turning point formula every time. What makes it level 3 is that there is no numbers involved here. So you can't use your calculator or calculations. You must understand what the job of A, P, and Q is, and we're going to show you that now. Firstly, I'm going to use an example to let you get the feeling. I took an equation, this one, and sketched it. It's the same as this formula we're going to use. So I wrote this down. Firstly, this is my turning point, plus 1 and minus 4. That is my turning point. There's a plus in front here. That means it's a happy parabola. So A is bigger than 0 means that the graph will be happy. The turning point is plus 1 and minus 4. I got that from over there. If that is a negative, that becomes a positive. If that is a negative, it stays a negative. So in this specific case, A is bigger than 0, so that means positive. P is smaller than 0, although this is a plus 1 over here. P is smaller than 0, because if the minus comes out of there, it becomes a positive. And Q is smaller than 0, because that is a minus 4 at the back. So again, the A tells me if it's happy or unhappy. This one is happy. The P is always the opposite of what it actually is. If P is smaller than 0, that means it will be a positive. Q is actually what it is. That's the Y of my turning point. So if Q is smaller than 0, he is really negative. So for the purpose of this video, if they give me this formula, tell me A is bigger than 0, it is smiley. P is smaller than 0, means the turning point is on this side of the Y axis. Q is negative means the Y is down here somewhere. I'm just going to put out the answers and then explain it to you. We have to find out if A is positive or negative, the same with P and Q. In this case, A is bigger than 0 because it's a smiley face, so it's positive. P is smaller than 0, in other words negative, because in the bracket we would have had X minus 4, that makes it a plus 4 when it comes out. Q is positive because my Y value is above the X axis. So that I just took examples here. This could have been a x minus 4. That's why p is negative. And q can be any positive number above the x-axis. So the answer is a is positive, p is negative, and q is positive. If you don't understand, just leave the video. Again, I'm just giving you the answer. a is negative. a is smaller than 0 because it's unhappy. I can see this guy is unhappy. p is bigger than 0. It is positive because in the bracket there we will have a x plus something to move it to the left-hand side of the y-axis. And Q is bigger than 0 because the turning point is above the x-axis. Just took an example. It might be that x was minus 2 and y was 3. But A is negative, P is positive, and Q is positive. Last one of this kind. In this case, I just put out the answers for you again. I said A is negative, smaller than 0 because it's an unhappy parabola. P is equal to 0 this time because it's on the y-axis. It'll have an example like just x squared with no plus or minus next door to it. Q is smaller than 0 because my y value of my turning point is underneath the x-axis. So A is negative, P is equal to 0, and Q is negative. To give me a drawing, something like this. Stop the video and get your brain around this. Now, it says here, draw a sketch graph of this looking formula. If they tell me that A is positive, B is negative, C is positive, and the roots are equal. Let's see how it works. Firstly, we know if A is positive, we'll have an happy parabola, so it's going to look like this. If they tell me B is smaller than 0, it means it's negative. This is quite some work. You combine it with whatever they told us about A. In... The formula of the x of your turning point is always minus b over 2a. It's going to give you the x. So now we already have this minus waiting here. They told us that the a is positive. So at the bottom we have a total positive. 2 times a positive will stay a positive, but it's a minus at this stage still. But they told us that b is negative, so I put a negative there where the b is, and a minus times a minus is a plus over a plus gives me a final plus. So my x of my turning point is a positive. So my axis of symmetry is on the right-hand side of the y-axis because of the combination of these two. Next they say C is bigger than 0. C is at the back. That's my y-intercept. My y-intercept is positive. 
and that means the y-intercept will be above the x-axis. And then they said the roots are equal. That means the parabola will be sitting on the x-axis, touching it. So we know it's happy. Yes, it's happy. The axis of symmetry is on the right-hand side. The y-intercept is positive, so it must go anywhere above the x-axis. And the roots are equal. It means it touches. So this is the drawing of this information. Stop the video and get your brain around this. Let's do one more for this video. They say draw a sketch graph of this parabola with this formula. A is negative, B is negative, C is negative, and they tell me that B squared minus 4AC is negative. This indicates that the roots are non-real. That's common. This you will understand if you understand your nature of the roots. This is your discriminant. Because A is negative, it will be an unhappy graph. Then I said, if we talk about B, we read it in combination with A. So we use X equals to minus B over 2A is the X of my turning point. We have the minus that was waiting already. The B is negative, so I put a negative over there. They told me A was negative, so there's a negative underneath there. Negative times a negative is a positive. Over a positive times a negative gives me a total negative. That means my axis of symmetry will be on the left-hand side of the y-axis. Next, I said C is smaller than 0. That means negative. C at the back indicates the y-intercept. So the y-intercept will be anywhere underneath the x-axis. Then, like I said in the beginning, this is negative, so my discriminant is negative. That means no real roots, in other words, no x-intercept. And the graph will look like this. So there is my axis of symmetry. We decided here it's going to be negative on the left-hand side. It's unhappy. Yes, we can see it. My y-intercept is negative. And there is no roots or x-intercept, so it just stays underneath the x-axis. Stop the video and try and get your brain around this. Please indicate whether you liked or disliked this video and subscribe to the channel. If there's anything you're not sure about in school mathematics, you can send the problem with a clear WhatsApp photo to this number. Then we will try and solve the problem and send back an answer to you as soon as possible for free. This was a typical question that somebody asked about this topic.